All right, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. We've got a great one lined up for you. Uh, this presentation is sort of um, a reprise, although with lots of additional um, opportunity to get real feedback and ask questions of a presentation that was uh, shared at Open Nation this year. And I've already told our speakers that it's one of the most popular presentations that we had this year. Uh, Kelly and Charmaine are joining us from the Queensland Police, and they have a really in incredible employee engagement program where they're getting feedback from their frontline employees and using it to improve their services. So the way it's going to work today is uh, Kelly and Charmaine will share their presentation with with you and there'll be a time for question and answers at the end. I will be monitoring the Q&A feed the whole time though so if there's an opportunity for me to stop Kelly and Charmaine and ask them your question you can go ahead and enter it at any time but hopefully we'll have time for everybody's questions at the end and I just wanted to let everyone know that we are rec recording this webinar and so we'll have that online for everyone after the event is over you can just watch your email for a link to the presentation. So I think that's it. Kelly and Charmaine, please take it away. Thanks, Jess. Uh, hello, everybody. It's Kelly here. And I'm Charmaine. It's um, our pleasure to be here today. Uh, a big, big shout out and thank you to um, Jessica from Scale for working with us to get this web webinar out to you all. Um, as Jess said, we did have the great pleasure of attending uh, the Open Nation conference in San Francisco oh, a couple of weeks ago now. It only feels like yesterday. Um, so, look, we'll get started into it. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to share with everyone else of, of our journey over the last 18 months. So please don't be afraid to ask the questions. Um, that's why we're here and that's what we hope to do is be able to help and, and share our learnings with you all. So uh, let's get into it. I'll get you all just to uh, stop and pause for a minute and imagine connecting 15,715 people working across a state that for our international counterparts spans 656,000 miles, and for our Australian counterparts, over 1.8 million square kilometres. That was the task that Charmaine and I were given with the rest of our innovation unit at the Queensland Police Service. So we want to share with you how we found the energy from all of our people, how we gave it the right attention, and we, how we were able to connect the unconnected. So we'll take you through our journey by showing you a few of our people and talking a bit about that. So we have, as I said, 15,715 people spanned across our, our vast state, and that is made up of 63% sworn staff and 27% unsworn staff. Now, what I mean by that, a sworn officer is myself, so I'm a senior sergeant of police, and I've had to attend, I went through a police academy, undertook a series of, of training, and then I swore an oath to protect and serve the members of Queensland. Now, Charmaine comes to us in our organisation in an unsworn capacity, which means Charmaine didn't go through an academy and hasn't sworn an oath, but still brings with us a huge amount of experience from a wealth of industries that Charmaine's already worked in, but all of our unsworn members bring in a whole different perspective, and together, collectively, the sworn and the unsworn staff work hand in hand to make Queensland Police Service the best police service in the world. Sorry to those other police officers who <laughs> may be listening. <laughs> so those people are scattered throughout the state. Now, many of them work uh, with a, a large group of officers. Some of them work isolated on their own in single officer stations. So as you can see in the pink there, we are represented. Um, very, very large distance for us to go from the bottom of our state all the way up to the north. Straight is 32 hours drive. Now, we only have in Queensland 5 million people, but the size of Queensland is four times the size of California. But if you look at that, they have 39 million people, some eight times the amount of people than what we have. So our tasks that we were given to connect the unconnected, to bring something into our organisation that will allow our people anywhere, anytime to connect to one another was a mammoth task in itself not to mention the cultural aspect that we had to um, overcome and, and deal with to make that um, even dream a reality. We're going to show you through a series of photos just to really sell the picture as to how vast uh, yeah. some of our environments are and how different our operating environments were. So really for us, sometimes complex, um, complex problems 
are hard to solve because what might work in one area won't necessarily work in, a, in another. So the value of this system allowed us to hear from those who might ordinarily not have been tapped into to really better understand what we needed to do to meet their operating environment. So this is one of our rural offices. Um, and as you can see there, he's in a four wheel drive. So their terrain is quite rugged and tough. So the different modes of operating and different modes of vehicles you'll see in these next pictures also talks to what we have to contend with. So this is one of our rural offices. Um, so in Queensland, we have quite a vast farming and agricultural area. Um, so another mode of transport. Uh, that's one of our female police officers who's in our stock squad. And now outback Queensland, right in the middle of Queensland. So we border with the Northern Territory and with New South Wales. So vast amount of, of space, red dirt, as thick as it comes. That is what you see is what you get there. Um, so a lot of the times these officers will drive for, for miles or kilometres without passing another car or without even seeing another police officer. And again, our vast coastline which stems from the south to the north. Another mode of transport for our officers. Um, tough job, that one. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Uh, so again, you can really start to understand how we... Uh, the value of connecting all of these officers, but really needing to truly understand that what works for a water police officer might not work for an officer in outback Queensland. And the best one, which is our city, this is Brisbane, where Charmaine and I both work and where we both live. So this is that real city metropolitan type of policing, heavy populated business district, um, lots of high rises, universities, uh, very similar, represented in our Townsville, in our Cairns, Gold Coast area. Um, very dense, heavily populated policing environments there. So just a little bit about our organisation and, and our unit. So our unit came into being a little bit over two years ago. And at that time, there was a change in vision for the organisation. And as you can see, innovation and collaboration at its centre there. So absolutely fantastic from the point of view of an innovation unit. For an innovation definition within the Queensland Police Service, we've chosen one that's deliberately broad, and that is doing things differently and better to add value. So this could be incremental right through to transformational change. So innovation has been happening for a really long time in the Queensland Police Service. It's not just simply because a unit sprang into being that innovation occurred. So one of the priorities for our unit was to make sure that we harnessed the really great work that was already occurring right throughout the state. Harness it and make sure that we can scale that uh, for the betterment of the service. In terms of outcomes for innovation for the Queensland Police Service, it's simpler, better and safer. So that's simpler for our front line, better for the bottom line, and safer for all. And the safer for all isn't just for our people, it's ultimately about the community that we serve. So the Queensland Police Service um, has connected really well with our community, focusing energy and attention on things that are important. Uh, and this is one example. Uh, this is us giving energy and attention attention to uh, breast, can breast cancer awareness. This is up in Noosa, this is a Noosa fun run. The second photo is some of our officers giving their energy and attention to support a global campaign. And this is White Ribbon. So this is uh, to eliminate violence against women. And this last one is road safety. Uh, and this is a, a core strategic, links to a core strategic objective of our organisation, which is to make our community safe. So externally, we've been focusing energy and attention really well. We needed to do this same thing internally. And that was to focus on our people. Um, so one of the questions we had of the audience was, well, why, why are you considering open innovation? So Jess, can you help us with that? There you go, you should be seeing that poll now. We'd love for you to take the chance to uh, respond and tell us a little bit about your program and why you're considering open innovation. Thanks, Jess. So for us, that was really important that um, for many, many years externally, uh, we've been working very, very well with our community. It was really time to start flipping that model and looking inside internally and focusing on our people and working out how working with our people, uh, giving them a space to, to talk and to collaborate, how, how we could start to do things differently. 
So this really came from the top, from our people at the top, our Deputy Commissioner at the time called our Innovation Unit in and asked us to go out and speak to our people and ask them two key questions. One was what makes their job hard and how could we make their job simpler, better and safer? So this was a really monumental moment for the Queensland Police Service. It was that flipping of the model. Rather than telling people what needed to be done and how they needed to do it, it was about asking them what was painful, what was hard, what were the opportunities and the benefits. So we were sent out then and, and we, we really went out cold. We, weren't, we, weren't, we had no idea what we were going to receive when we went out to the people. We were coming out from headquarters, um, back out onto the front line and speaking to these people face to face. Now, what I can tell you is very quickly we were blown away that the energy that our people had, as soon as we walked in, we walked into their stations unannounced. We didn't want them to know we were coming. We didn't want them to be thinking about these two questions. We wanted to hear straight off the cuff what made their job hard because that was that true root cause and we knew then if we had that information, we could start working towards making it simpler, better or safer. So we would go to these stations, walk in. We'd have time frames set for us so that we could get to as many stations as possible. The time frames blew out. Once we started talking, one, two, three officers would come over. They would flock to us. We couldn't leave those stations. They had so much information to give. We had to get that information and take it back to the executive to show the value of that connection. And that's exactly what we did. So we found the energy. We were able to say to our executive leadership, you asked us to ask these questions. This is what they told us. So our people, sorry, Shaman. I was going to say, so it's really interesting to us. I'm just having a look at the poll results and the biggest header there is around to improve employee engagement. And it's one of the major things that we'll really be touching on today, ultimately. Uh, next one, we've got neck and neck for to get uh, new ideas and to get better quality ideas. So uh, certainly we'll be we're touching on the new ideas. Um, the better quality ideas uh, will be a different presentation that we'll need to give Jess at another time. <laughs> so right. I'll, let, I'll let Kelly continue. <laughs> Thanks for that, Jermaine. So what we were able to do from all that information we got from our frontline officers, now in two days we, we got around to 17 stations, spoke to 100 officers, but we, we were able to receive 450 different pieces of data from them and we themed that data up to get five key priorities of our frontline officers that made their job hard. We presented that back to our executive leadership team. They also had their five strategic priorities that they wanted, um, uh, they wanted addressed. Now, interesting enough, five from the front line and the five from the executive were completely different. Now, that's not to say there was anything wrong with that, but there was a significant difference which brought about a significant gap and a disconnect from our executive level to our front line level. Our next job then was to connect that. So we needed to find a way to connect it. So first of all, to do that, we needed to find that energy. We knew it was in our people. Uh, we needed to come up with something, some way to capture and harness that energy. We also knew that money was another form of energy because if we had a source, now us as a unit at Innovation Unit, we had no funding, we had no seed funding, so we needed to go to pockets of the organisation who were well funded, who could bring about um, positive and valuable change for us with the use of the energy from our people. We then worked through, we needed to understand our, um, the environment. We knew our people wanted to talk, but how in a chain of command environment with a very strict hierarchical structure were we going to allow or make our people feel comfortable to come forward and speak to us? So within our organisation, we have 11 rank structures. Now, I'm a senior sergeant. I sit right in the middle. So normally for a decision maker of, of the general idea that would come through, sits at the level above me as an inspector. So our young officers needed to go through six layers of chain of command to get a decision made. Now, as you could well imagine, at times that layering was stifling innovation. Ideas are very fragile, will quite often not be fully heard or fully understood, and certainly a lot of the times not progress through all the way to the top, which as you would understand, that could be detrimental to the people putting those ideas forward if they could see that they weren't being valued, listened to, or even adopted or added on. So for us, we needed to understand that environment and work out what we needed to do to change to make sure the right authorising environment was provided to our people. But more importantly, that our people knew that they had permission, they had authority to speak outside of that chain of command and that was welcomed. They were asked to be courageous and step forward and put their ideas out there. So that took us to the point, we knew where the energy was, we knew what the environment was all about, 
So we needed to come up with a system. Now our system was through idea, idea scale. So it was our idea management system. We termed ours ICOP, little play on words, but ideas connecting our people. So we had the energy, we understood the environment, we had the system. We then had to work out how to get them into the system, how to capture that energy, give it the right attention and get results for them. So in that approach, we basically really set about the design of our system. That was most important for us to make sure it was right. We needed to design it in a way that would create engagement. Now, for us, the main goal was connecting the unconnected. So we were very mindful about putting parameters and barriers around them. So we set up two spaces. We had an idea exchange space, and that was fully open, fully transparent. Anyone, anywhere, anytime could take part in that space. We allowed them to submit a new idea on any topic, to ask a question or to share knowledge. Now, with 15,500 people, yes, that was a huge risk that we undertook. We were aware of that risk. We were aware that we could have very quickly been inundated with ideas, but we were also confident, much like the face-to-face -face discussions, that the data would theme itself, and very quickly it did. So, again, the same few pain points or areas of um, enhancement or improvement opportunities were being presented very quickly on the system. We also wanted a separate space that we termed challenge space. Now that allowed us to really put some strict parameters and boundaries around a topic of discussion. So an example I'll give you there, we wanted to um, better understand the domestic violence space for our people. What were the barriers? What were the opportunities? So we had our business owner, the domestic and family violence um, unit, to come on board to say, yes, we'll, we'll moderate with you on this. We want to hear about this. So that just allowed our people to talk solely on the domestic violence issues, a more concent concentrated approach with that. Um, so with that, we, with the capturing of the energy, the narrative around our system was what was critical. These, this next slide and this next discussion is how we got that engagement happening. And still to this day, probably 14 months on, why I think our system has worked and, and, and why it will continue to work. So the narrative in the first instance, they were the key messaging that we sent out um, before we started, um, on launch, during launch, and still today, our every day. So our key messages will always go out with our branding of the system, so that recognition of that name and that brand was, was true to its word. And our key messages stayed the same with our people. It was about them being courageous. It was them having permission to speak outside of the chain of command. And it was about creating the right positive environment and the positive energy. So we were very strong with them early on that the information that came into the system was a positive space. It wasn't a wind space. Um, and we wanted that known by our leadership team because it wasn't just this system wasn't going to fix everything. They needed the right leadership outside the platform, supporting the people to be involved and to have those discussions. We move into that moderation space. Now our team, very early on, we had three full-time moderators on that system. That was just to get the start and it was for us to learn as we went as well. And as I said, we had open innovation. We didn't know what the influx was going to be. But what we did commit to do in that space was to moderate on every idea. We gave a response to every comment or every submission that went on there in the early days because we wanted our people to know this wasn't an automated system. There was real people at the other end of this taking their idea on, connecting it to the right expert or business owner to bring back a response for them. And we kept our um, language in that moderation space, very conversational. We, we didn't want it to be, yes, um, the, the policy and the guidelines say this, this, this and this. We want it to be, hey, great idea, really interested to hear what others have in this space. We'll keep this bubbling on and watch it, watch it play out. Uh, we wanted people to know that it was something that they could have a back and forth, two-way conversation in there. And you could see that happening quite quickly. Now, as our system has matured and as our people have adapted to the way it works and as we've brought more business owners in, our degree of moderation as a moderation team has wound back. Yes, we still um, overview the system. We, we pretty much have one full-time person on the system now with a few others um, intermittently helping out on the system. Um, but we don't moderate on every single idea now. We don't need to because what we found is our experts or our business owners are automatically coming on and doing that themselves. Um, so in the early days, I, would, I or another moderator would be poking the bear by 
sending an email or picking up the phone to a particular business area and say, hey, have you seen the idea on ICOP this morning? That relates to your area. Would you mind jumping on and adding a comment? Now, people have learnt and seen the value of doing that and they're doing it automatically themselves now. But that only came about by the relationships that we were building. Um, and that was a very strong role that we played. Uh, as I said, the data themed itself. So we went to those business owner that that data related to. And we were able to show them the value of having real-time, one-on-one connection with their end user. Show them the value of being able to improve that customer or that user experience for them by having a direct conduit not having to rely on a survey that gave them a one-way response and not able to delve into it any further. So it was really important for us to get those owners on board quickly, but for them to see the value of having that connection, instant connection with their user group. Now, the final thing that worked with that energy space for us was the commitment that we made to the frontline people or anyone on our system submitting is that we would close the loop of conversation. And that also meant we weren't afraid to say no to them. So every idea that came through didn't necessarily come out of the system as a win as a result. Some ideas were closed because there was no appetite, it wasn't feasible or viable. But if that was the case, we gave them an if not, why not? So no, this won't be happening for these reasons. Now, a lot of the time they weren't happy with a no, but they were happy with the response, accepted that and moved on to the next item of discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was very important for us to close that loop of conversation. Now, that conversation may have remained open for six or so uh, weeks while we were back and forth to business owners, but we gave them updates and we, we ended it when we had a result to end it with. And I think that was really important for us and that was about building trust with our people. It was about showing them that they were being listened to. Every idea was, was um, given an opportunity to be heard and we would determine that by the amount of votes and the amount of comments that were being discussed on there. But people, and we still get emails today saying, thank you very much for the response. It's great to have a response back. Um, Jess, it might be opportune time to put in another polling question at this stage. Sure. We were, we were interested in sort of how many people do, do you all have in your teams uh, looking at open innovation at the moment? This was one of those things that was interesting in our audience. You had some people that had whole teams and somebody, some people who didn't even have any resources assigned. And, and look, we found that amazing from the conference. There were some people that was obviously part of their day job. Uh, so we're so fortunate um, with the leadership that we have within the QPS that they've provided the energy and attention through the resources that we have in our team to do this. And I think the important part of that for those listening, looking to, to bring in a system and create a team like this is it's, it's important to have that leadership support. Absolutely, it's critical. It's also important to have the right team um, who can connect with the people on the outside because it is a constant day-to-day um, -day, uh, back and forth conversation because for many people, innovation is a scary word. Mm -hmm. um, for many people, it's quite frightening to be online in an open, transparent space. So at times, it was about that reassurance to your business owners or reassurance to your, um, your new registered members that this is a safe space. This is their opportunity to be a part of future conversations. So it's a, it's a team member who's not just going to sit behind a computer and, and do the odd moderation comment. It's someone who's going to be front and centre not afraid to have those difficult conversations at time to, to push a business owner to realise that, no, no, you need to be involved in this. Um, you need to be a little bit cheeky and have a little bit of nudge factor at times and, and be um, uh, repetitive in, in your pursuit to get people engaged on the system. And it's really important to show the value that the system can give to them ultimately, either as an idea submitter or as a business owner within the organisation. And once you've cracked uh, crack that nut, uh, then people, as Kelly said, start to see the value and how it can help them do what they need to do. Right. They're really interesting results, Jess. Have you had this poll question before? Um, we, I, not, not in this format, but it's really interesting to see that there's sort of like the, a dip in the middle. It's either no one or a team that's managing ideas. No, it's very, very interesting indeed. Um, I think what's, what's also interesting to bring out from... Um, uh, the, the conference in this space is, as Charmaine mentioned before, others just had it as, as a, oh, by the way, can you do this? Almost like a, we need to tick an innovation box. Can you just have a look at this? 
Um, this is so much more than just ticking a box, obviously. If we've got to the point now where this becomes part of day-to-day -day conversation. Um, we were very smart in the way that we nuzzled into different um, governance committees, which I'll talk to shortly as the attention source. Uh, but we now find that we go to these committees and they're asking us, has this been on ICOP? What have the people said? Um, but again, that was an evolution and that was a, a period of time that took to get that understanding of the actual value of an evidence base that you can build from um, the importance or the priority or the, or the want or the need from our people to put focus into a particular point of discussion that's on the system. Uh, and I think that that's really what's starting to come out now, 12 months on in our organisation, as we're starting to see some good wins coming through the system the fact that some of those wins have been driven right from the very bottom of our organisation all the way through to getting some significant results for the whole of the state. Um, so when we're talking about taking the energy to the attention, um, so we had all the energy in the system, we had all the users in the system. So we were, we were seeing 124 new registered users weekly for the first 10 months of operation of our system. Now that was even through a closure. We had to close the system for one month in April due to the Commonwealth Games. Our team was deployed at the Games. And because we had committed to moderating the system 100%, um, it was a risk to keep it open while no one was moderating it. Now we told our people being transparent, we'll be closed for a month over Com Games, but we'll be back in May. And look, they were not happy. They were up in arms wanting us to stay open. Why did it have to close? So for us, that was great. They wanted this space. They, they were could see the value in it. So closing that, uh, we were very hesitant because we weren't sure was it going to be out of sight, out of mind. Um, but I'm very pleased to say the minute we reopened, it was like a relaunch opportunity for us. And straight away again, we, we saw that significant number of new users every week coming onto the system. Um, so even sitting today, we're at about 42% of our organisation, about 6,600 people um, who have opted in, registered into the system and who are actively a part of daily conversations on there for us. Um, now, what, what we've seen is that representation is off across every state, every, sorry, every region, every command, and every rank or level within our organisation is represented in some way, shape or form. So a really great cross-section and diverse group that are taking part in these conversations. Um, so when I talk to the attention, we already had in our organisation a number of um, governance committees set up so we didn't recreate an innovation decision-making committee. We went to what we already had. So we had a uniform committee. We had a fleet governance committee. We had an ICT um, committee. Uh, we had an operational equipment committee. Now, ironically enough, those four committees tapped into four out of the five key data themes that we would see on the system. So we weren't standing members on those committees. We now are standing members. So again, this is an example of where we needed to nuzzle our way in to show the value of raising these ideas of our people at these committee levels. Now, all of those committees are chaired by an assistant commissioner, which is the third highest level in our organisation. So significant decision makers, they were decision making committees. So for us in our narrative out in the field talking to people, we were able to say, we will bring your voice from the system to these committees. We're sitting at the table beside these assistant commissioners, decision makers talking about your idea, your submission, your conversations. Uh, and that was highly valuable. One, to get credibility with our people, but two, to get evidence, gather evidence and take that to these committees to help our decision makers make a more informed decision or prioritise their decision making as a result of what was important to our people. So really, uh, where are we today? Um, I've talked about the fact with 42% of our organisation is on the system. Uh, we've had 37 great wins come through the system already. We have about 52 sitting in our already happening stage. And what that means is there's a project underway or there's work or development underway on 52 other ideas that have come through the system. Um, some great wins and examples in that space, um, in that simpler space, it's, we've seen examples of we've um, modified processes down from a 15-step process down to a 10-step. Um, we've eliminated old, outdated uh, forms or documentation that's no longer required. Um, some other examples, uh, you know, a, a great one for our organisation is, you know, six months ago we didn't have uh, tactical first aid kits as part of our um, 
car crew kits. We had a standard first aid kit, but attack first aid kit brings in um, life-saving equipment like a, um, a tourniquet and a um, chest um, su suction for if there was a bullet wound or, or a knife wound. Uh, now, we didn't have any set standards as to where these were kept, and we, we had people come through on the system proposing that these are to be kept in the glove box of all vehicles. So in an emergency, critical stress, people know exactly where to go, where to find them. And we've had three instances already where um, tourniquets have been applied uh, to members of the public and to an officer, uh, which, have, which have resulted in saving a life. So, you know, you, know, you don't get a lot better than that. Um, some great wins there. Another example is where we've been able to incorporate another connection with our members of the public by introducing a um, SMS capability from our email system. Now, this stemmed from two young constables, one in Gladstone and one in Annerley, raising this idea within a day of each other. Um, they were able to host the trial, a three-month trial in their areas, which brought about reward and recognition for them with their people. Now, that trial is deemed to be so successful um, and cost-saving and efficiency and connection with the community that that's been approved to be rolled out statewide around our whole state now. So a huge, valuable saving there, simply from a, an idea that was presented by um, two young constables within our organisation. Um, I'll hand over to Charmaine. So in terms of where we are today, and this is taking you back to that, it's actually, it's a capability model uh, and, and looking at the environment that, that we're working within. What are we seeing around leadership? Well, we've got leadership in action demonstrated within the platform. Uh, we have assistant commissioners on our platform talking directly with constables in the field. And that's seriously empowering and, and fantastic for us to see. We have the chain of command working still really well in the environment that needs to, but we also have another environment where it's about conversation and about collaboration, critiquing each other's ideas um, and sharing information across the service. From a mindsets and behaviours point of view, well, ultimately, we're about building trust and it's trust between the people and us as a channel for them in terms of the energy and the ideas and the attention that they seek but it's also between the frontline and our leadership, uh, and that's engagement of our workforce. Uh, and finally, I suppose we have a fantastic platform that's working really well for us. Uh, we have, at this point, as Kel said, 42% of our uh, workforce, so 6, over 6,300 people. Uh, amazing a number of people that have opted in for this platform. We're in the process of doing benefits analysis now um, so that we can actually get uh, come back to you with another story around the, the results in terms of those wins. But what we did do initially is from an engagement point of view, we pitched for this platform using uh, an employee engagement survey and it's, it's externally run. It's run by the Queensland State Government. It's called Working for Queensland. And within that survey, there are innovation enablers in the questions. Now, as a result, 12 months on, we have an improvement across the board in our innovation enablers of 3%. For one of the questions, there was an increase in 5%. Now, we've been told that is a significant change uh, in a year for, for those types of measures. And, and ours is a, a significant program that's contributed to that engagement of our workforce. So in looking back over the past year, um, and Kelly and I, ref it's, it's lovely to reflect on this and this is the other learning we'd like to give you. Make sure you stop and, and, and take those wins as you get them along the way. But what, what this year has highlighted to us is that the, it's the value of understanding the energy within your organisation and the value that you can see and, and reap when you give it the right attention. So if I can have your attention for one more moment, um, we've created a little video internally uh, that we'd like to share with you about our journey.
Thank you, Jess. Thank you very much, Kelly and Charmaine. Uh, um, it was really exciting at Open Nation to see that video up on the big screen. And so I think one of the things I wanted to point out to folks is that uh, we have a copy of it, which we'll be m mailing out in the follow-up notes to this email, so or to this webinar in the email, so that you can uh, watch it on your own big screen with full sound because it's a it's a very inspiring. I suspect piece of popcorn with that, people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's awesome. You've got a very great story. I mean, I, I love it when I hear people are using this tool to save lives. There's absolutely nothing better to hear. So uh, I think it's a great opportunity to open it up for questions. And we've had a few people who are actually already uh, sending in their questions. We've got people who are getting ready to launch their own program. So we'll just uh, jump right into it. Um, one of the questions was about those business owners that you were aligning great ideas to. How did you go about finding good business owners? And then I might add to that, um, what what makes somebody a good business owner? Okay, yes, good question. Thank you. Um, so when we talk about a business owner, we talk about uh, managers or, or work units within our organisation. So within our um, within the organisation, we have five uh, five regions and 10 commands, and within each of those, there is a work group. Um, so different offices that look after different packages of work. So for us, um, at times, it was about taking the time to sit down for a couple of hours with these business owners to truly um, show them the value of the system. A lot of them initially thought that we were creating work for them um, by sending stuff their way. But we were able to change the narrative and explain to them that this work would have come to them. It would have just taken longer to get there, going through the old chain of command with a, a, a written report that went through multiple layers until it came across to them. So essentially, we weren't creating more work. We were getting the work to them quicker, but we were connecting them with the channel to the end user of that work. So for us, a good business owner is someone who has accountability, responsibility, uh, and can make the decision in a way. Uh, so I suppose how you find them, I suppose it, it will depend on your idea or the problem that you're solving. Uh, ultimately, who's got skin in the game? And it may not be just one business owner. Uh, in our case, uh, because of the way that the data themed, that was the case. But perhaps in other organisations, you might have multiple sponsors of something that you might need to, to take forward. What's going to make it successful? Who needs to be involved in order to make this successful, I suppose, is the question that I ask myself. Hopefully that's helpful, Frederick. I think there's one other thing there is they had to, they were the experts in that space. We were very um, aware of not answering everything. We didn't want it to be the world according to the innovation unit or the world according to Kelly or to, according to Charmaine. If Kelly's not an expert in the legislation, Kelly would go to the legislation branch who were the business owners. So to see an answer on a submission from the legislation branch um, spoke volumes. It was more powerful to our people that they knew they were being connected directly with the owners of that work. And there's huge amounts of expertise in the QPS to really reach into. So it's a really good point, Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, on that next one there, I see is it open to staff only, not public? At this right. stage, we, it is. We are internally focused only. Um, there's certainly opportunity to open it externally for us. Um, we're well aware that New York Police Department used to engage with members of the community and having met um, the great staff from NASA while we're at Open Nation, they have two instances, one that's an external facing instance generally where they seek um, input from uh, members of the public but they also have an internal instance. So it certainly has the capability to do both. both. We're very much learning to walk at this stage. We, we, we now know we can crawl in the system. We're learning to walk, but we're looking at that as a valuable opportunity in the future for us to open it up externally. It seems like an interesting possibility since you had the mandate from leadership to open up to all of your employees. They might be open to opening it up further to your community in the future. And our leadership definitely wants to create those connections with our community, mm -hmm. but they are focused uh, on the things that matter well. So uh, for us, again, it's watch this space. Again, I think we need to 
crawl and then walk and then work out what's really the best avenue and how do we best engage with that? It's a different audience for us, uh, our community. What's important to them? Uh, is a, it's a different question, different answers that will come to us rather than what we get from our internal staff. So really valuable content. I think, Jess, are you happy for me just to go down the line with the if, question? If you'd like to, but just uh, repeat them so that the folks who oh, can't I'm sorry. Yep, sorry, good point. Yep. So the next one being, are, the di are they digital innovation only or more general innovation? Uh, we have a mixed bag. Um, generally, I would say it's probably more general. We have had a couple of specific um, digital-related uh, ideas um, within the platform, but it's non-scriptive for us. It's whatever comes in from our people. We didn't want innovation just to be about technology or something new and shiny. Uh, it's, it's anything that adds value to our people. Anything you want to add? No? Mm -hmm. Um, next one, if it is an IT digital innovation, do you have access to funds? <laughs> no, we have no funding. Um, the only funding we have access to is if a unit is already funded for work. So a great example I can give you there, our officers use cue lights, um, so iPads out on the street. Uh, that connects them to our main database. So if they pull over a car and need to do a vehicle check or a person check, they have that capability within the vehicle. Now that program, that group, Mobility Services Group, they are funded to do upgrades to that iPad device. Now they had 16 work packages that they were already funded for over the next 12 months. Their project team had prioritised that one to 16. Now we talked them into putting it onto the system and asking our frontline people to vote five times for the top five priorities. Now by doing that, they opened it for two weeks they got 2,500 votes and they completely reprioritised the top five by what was important to the frontline staff. Now, what was interesting there is our project team had their number three item actually received negative 67 votes from our frontline staff. They didn't wow. see value. They didn't want that. So that um, discussion completely reprioritised that work that was funded for. So a great example there of... Um, reaching into your people and finding what's out important to them. Um, okay, the next one is, can you give a bit more information about the platform functionality, specifically if it supports communications to the audience? Um, Jess, that's probably more attuned to you. From our perspective, I can talk to the fact that it's a, a very user-friendly system um, that the, the average user who's not tech savvy can jump on and navigate their way quite easily. Not a problem at all. Um, it does give you capability to do email bursts out to your audience. Um, poll it function. gives polling, a blog function. Uh, it does have integration with some of your other systems as well. Um, but I think Jess is probably the best space person for that to give I mean, you real technicality. We, we, found it, sorry, we found it really valuable. Ultimately, we're, we're about uh, communicating uh, directly with our frontline audience. So um, I'm not sure if there's something specifically that you're after, uh, is it Hamilton, um, around uh, supporting internal communications. We use it to share information as well. So we have a did you know that we put on there. Sometimes when you have a large organisation, there are projects that are happening down, say, in headquarters, that it might take a little bit of time to get out to the regional areas for them to understand that some of the problems they're experiencing are being looked at. So that did you know is a way of us communicating uh, you know, internal communications to our frontline audience around things that are happening to keep them apprised. And it's like a pull strategy. They can, the, some of the fantastic things within the platform is if I put some, a particular subject in, it'll find all those ideas for me around it. So they'll find the did you knows as well as all the ideas that have been submitted as well. So from a knowledge management point of view, it's really um, very valuable from that point of view for us. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love having you guys talk about the capability <laughs> more than I like talking about it because you, you're, you're, uh, you know, you guys are using it every day. Um, but I will say there's, yeah, there's multi-channel uh, communications functionality built into the tool that maybe you guys can't use even, like our social media integrations that allows you to like tweet out ideas if you're um, engaging people publicly. And, um, you know, other ways to integr integrate into other systems that you might have. Um, we have a way to collect ideas on, via mobile as well. Um, but, yeah, so it, it, the communications go both ways. Certainly there's plenty of email capabilities from in, within the tools. You can talk to people who suggest ideas or commented on ideas. And 
yeah, a range of communications capabilities. Fantastic. So um, another question is, is the web portal out of the box purchased or built by QPS? So um, it's basically both. Uh, you have decisions you need to make that the platform is really built for you and then it's up to you to customise it to what you need for your um, circumstance. So we've got an open innovation space and we have what's called funnels where you funnel an idea through so people can see progression. It's different in our open innovation space to a challenge. So there's decisions that you need to make around the design of your platform before you launch it. But all of the, I suppose, the ingredients are there is the best way that I can describe it for you to make decisions on. Uh, the thing that we loved about the design, there's two things that I loved when we were trying to design the platform is the support that we were given by our account manager, Matt, which we'll do a call out for because we love Matt, uh, around some of the decisions and whether we understood the functionality in the tool well. Uh, we're not actually using even all of what's capable in the tool yet and I think we'll progress as we mature and we'll use more and more. Um, the other thing that I liked is when you're doing the original design, there's, um, I'm not sure if many of you know about Basecamp, it's, um, it's like a little online platform that you can log on to and uh, the IdeaScale guys have created a whole list of what you need to do to implement your platform from understanding your strategy right through to doing single sign-on and how that might work uh, for your organisation. So. I use that um, when we were designing the platform initially, but also to show management it's not just, sometimes it's not just plug and play. You can do that and, it's, and they have out of the box templates that you can use, but if you do want to make it your own, it has that opportunity as well. Jess, anything you'd like to add or? <laughs> no, I, I think that's, that's a great uh, place, place to leave that question. I was thinking maybe we'd answer Patricia's question and then we'd have to, we've already gone a little over time, so. Okay. Um, is there scope the other ones by, by email. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, is there scope for anonymous ideas and do you see an advantage to this? Um, we deliberately uh, didn't want anonymous ideas, um, especially when we were doing open innovation. Um, part of what we're doing is cultural change within the organisation. Um, we wanted to give them a different space and we needed them to stand behind their idea. Um, I, I personally, I'm not a fan of anonymous ideas. I think that that would speak to something else you need to fix within your organisation if you think you need to, to have an anonymous idea. There's other work you need to do outside of the platform. Um, that's my own personal opinion, though. Um, that's a decision that we made specifically. We wanted people to, to talk amongst themselves, to create a community, and to create a community, it's nice to know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. the, the other answer though is there is scope to do that. You can choose anonymous or public post um, so people can see. So you definitely control that as the moderator or the administrator. Um, Charmaine's explained the good and the bad of that. But you also have the opportunity within your community. So we've got a closed challenge running in ours at the moment. So we've only opened questions up to our command, which out of the 6,500 people on there, there's only 200 that can actually see these questions and answer them because they specifically relate to our management team so that our team has used this tool as opposed to a survey to go to our people and ask questions on. Um, but you've got scope to do both there, Patricia. You certainly control that, um, the decision that's right for your company. But for us, it's about telling our people to be courageous, put their name forward and others to support and value add to those ideas. Thank you. All right, Jess, did you... There's one last one there, Jess. Have we got time there, or? There is one last one. Why don't you go ahead and try and answer that one as quickly as possible? <laughs> <laughs> um, technically, no. We haven't done comparison with respect to the audio management space. WA Police currently use the system. We learnt a lot from them. Um, as far as I'm aware, we're the only other um, police agency other than WA and New York Police that are, are doing it. Certainly in the innovation, in the mobility, in the... Um, futuristic space. Um, I'm probably biased, but I would say uh, we are one of the lead agencies in that space in time. Uh, but that being said, we're learning every day with this platform. It's certainly been a valuable source for us to connect our people and, and highly worth doing for that engagement factor. Uh, but we're still learning. There's so many bigger um, steps ahead of us to grow this system to, to benefit even more. 
Thank you. The, the Working for Queensland survey that's run by the Queensland State Government enables us to kind of benchmark ourselves against other state government organisations. So from that point of view, we can kind of have a look at um, how, we're, how we're engaging and are we making positive inroads with engagement with our workforce from that point of view. Um, unfortunately, well, fortunately, we're the only police service in, in the state of Queensland, so we don't have any direct correlation, I suppose, there. Great questions. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, Charmaine and Kelly, for speaking with us today. Uh, really inspiring story, and you guys are doing a great job uh, defining this program from the ground up. Thank you. Thank you for everyone for their afternoon if you're overseas, and um, good morning to everyone else in Australia. <laughs> all right, everyone. Let's see you all online. Thanks, Alicia. Bye. 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 See you, Jess. Bye.